Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. It's time to talk about AMD's latest GPU, the AMD Fury. Not the AMD Fury X, this is the AMD Fury. You're seeing here in front of me a pair of the new cards, uh, one from Sapphire, one from Asus. If you remember back to uh, AMD's launch event, they came out and said we're gonna have the AMD Fury X, which is our water-cooled version that will all be the same for, through all of our partners, right? They're not gonna allow to modify the PCB or change the cooler design. The AMD Fury would be an air-cooled design where partners will be able to differentiate amongst themselves for overclocking or cooler implementation or whatever. Today, we actually get to post our reviews of some of those cards. Now, uh, I have here two in front of us. I have the, this is the Sapphire Tri-X cooler. You can see here the Tri means there are three fans across here. Um, this was the first one we got in. Our first review is based on uh, benchmarks on this card. The second card we got in, and we'll be following up with another review very soon, is the Asus Strix Fury, Radeon R9 Fury. So this is a uh, another design. Again, it's got three fans across it. Um, both of these are very well designed cards. They're both very quiet. Uh, they're both very uh, efficient in terms of how cool they keep the GPUs. And we'll talk about the differences in a second. The R9 Fury compared to the R9 Fury X, the differences in specifications are important to point out. First of all, this is the Fiji Pro GPU versus the Fiji XT, which was on uh, the higher end variant. This has still has an 8.9 billion transistor GPU itself, but it actually is slightly cut back. This has 3,584 stream processors as opposed to 4,096 stream processors. So there's a sizable jump down there in terms of available compute performance that actually brings our um, theoretical peak compute of this card or this GPU to 7.2 teraflops. You still have 64 ROPs. Uh, you still have four gigs of high bandwidth memory of HBM uh, that will run at 500 megahertz uh, on a 4096 bit memory bus uh, at 512 gigabytes per second of total bandwidth. So this, the memory bandwidth is the same between the Fury and the Fury X. You do have uh, fewer texture units. You have 224 texture units on these GPUs as opposed to 256. And again, when we talk about benchmarks, we'll see if that actually affects anything. Both of these cards still have two 8-pin power connectors on them, right? So uh, they're the same in that regard as well. They still have the same display output connectivity. You've got, uh, actually this has three, yeah, three full-size display ports and one full-size HDMI. And the Asus card has a slight variance on it. They actually added a DVI port. So you have three full-size display ports, one full-size HDMI, and one dual-link DVI. So people who were maybe uh, discussing the lack of DVI connectivity on their cards, we'll be glad to see that added to the Asus Strix option. Base clock speeds on these are gonna vary because of the, the retail cards, but the kind of reference speed is 1000 megahertz on the GPU clock. That's 50 megahertz lower than the Fury X. The Sapphire card does come clocked. The, the Tri-X we have, the non-OC version, does come clocked at 1000 megahertz for its uh, GPU rate there. So, now let's talk about a couple of the interesting differences between the two cards we have in. One, if you look at the back of the Sapphire card, you can immediately see that there is uh, something amiss, right? There's a nice back plate on here that kind of covers up the PCB itself, but the PCB actually stops here, and the rest of this is just heatsink. So you can see, if you look at the front, it looks like a standard kind of flagship high-end graphics card in terms of length, but on the back you see it is a shortened PCB with uh, uh, heatsink kind of coming off the side of it. If you remember the NVIDIA GTX 670, or I'm sorry, uh, 660 and 760 did the same thing, except theirs was like a little bit shorter than that and the fan was what was actually sticking off the side. Um, so that's interesting there. Also this PCB length tells us that this is the same PCB that the AMD Fury X uses with the water cooler. And my guess is that there's probably no changes there uh, on the Sapphire card. The Asus card, although it is longer like this, actually has a nearly the full length PCB. The PCB actually stops at about this point right here, right by the uh, two 8-pin power connectors. And although it's hard to see, we'll take some pictures, we'll talk about this later when we do the full review of this card, but you can tell just by looking underneath the cooler that the PCB is much more empty than perhaps you're used to seeing a graphics card PCB because they have so much more space, they were able to kind of spread out things a little bit more. Maybe that helps with cooling, maybe that helps with power delivery, we'll have to see in the long run. But it definitely helps in terms of kind of strength and rigidity of, uh, of the card itself. So let's talk about the important things here, performance and power consumption. 
These cards are still rated at the same TDP as the Fury X, 275 watts, typical board power. And in my testing, uh, the Sapphire card used maybe six watts less power than the Fury X. Keep in mind that there's a pump and stuff that you have to power in a couple of, and one fan on the uh, Fury X versus three fans on this. And you can kind of see how that might balance out. I uh, haven't had a chance to test the Asus yet, but we'll do that in a, in a separate review as well. Performance wise, this is a $549 MSRP card. I know that the Sapphire card will come priced at that. I think the Asus might be just a, a little bit higher than that. Its competition is the GTX 980 from NVIDIA. As of now, the reference design kind of base price for that is $499. So the R9 Fury from AMD is about $50 more. In my testing, uh, and if you look at performance, both at 2560 by 1440 and 4K resolutions, the, uh, the new Sapphire Fury card is about 10 to 11, 12% faster than the GTX 980. And that's in Battlefield, Crisis 3, Metro Last Light, you know, kind of a, a host of, uh, of other games as well. The one exception, of course, not of course, but the one exception is still Grand Theft Auto 5, where even the newest 15.7 Catalyst driver didn't really seem to help the uh, AMD Fury or Fury X cards for that matter get their performance up uh, in order to compete better with the 980 and the 980 Ti. So this really does, from a performance standpoint, sit right between the 980 and the Fury X. It basically cuts it in half. This is about 10 to 12 percent slower than the full uh, full GPU water-cooled AMD Fury X that we talked about uh, last month, at the end of last month, right? So there's a hundred dollar price difference between those two parts. That's compelling. There's a fifty dollar price point between or difference between this and the 980. And now you get into all the other debates that, that occur with that. Do you recommend this over the GTX 980? I think that obviously depends on a lot of other things. Right now, NVIDIA has like a, a bundle with the new Batman game. You can't buy it, but you can get it if you buy an NVIDIA video card. Um, and you can get overclocked models of that that go significantly higher still that may put it closer in the price range of this particular card that may make it you know, potentially a match in overall performance. What I will say is the experience of using these two cards thus far uh, has been kind of better than what we saw with the Fury X, right? Remember with the Fury X so far, we've had the pump noise to deal with. Uh, we've had people talking about buzzing on the cards and maybe coil wine. Neither of these cards really had that issue. Now, obviously coil wine is something that will vary card to card, uh, but the fans on this are really kind of dead silent, even when they were targeting GPU temperatures of like 70 degrees Celsius, right? So not as cool as the Fury X, but way cooler than a reference design for a GTX 980 or 980 Ti. Uh, and they both do them in a, in a very silent fashion. Um, I actually, I actually really like these cards. I think these are the cards that, that AMD fans and AMD Radeon users want to strive or want to buy, right? Because the Fury X, you had to worry about noise, you had to worry about mounting a radiator. This, you don't have to worry about that. You just have to worry about the length of the cards, obviously. But you would have to do that with uh, most any flagship product. Part of me wonders if AMD would have been better off with the Fury X had they just let some air-cooled versions of it come out, right? Because there's no need to have a water cooler. It doesn't help anything, right? Except lower that temperature because these are the same TDP as the Fury X and these air coolers are able to do it just fine and they're quiet while they're doing it and they're keeping the GPU temperature still relatively low. Um, these will be available today, I believe, as this video goes up. Um, we'll have performance on that. Also in that review, you should see some crossfire performance results where we paired these two cards up together. Uh, I did, uh, as I record this video, we only had a couple of them, but like Battlefield 4 scaled very well uh, with a pair of R9 Fury cards. And I, I think this will be a compelling option. I think this is more of a card that gets NVIDIA to react than even the Fury X did, right? The Fury X still lost in performance to the GTX 980 Ti most of the time. This actually beats its competitor in the GTX 980, even though there's a slight price difference there. So I'll be curious to see what other AMD partners come out with uh, and, and how these cards kind of compare with each other. But it's great to see some competition here. And 
I, I would have no problems using these AMD Fury cards in a, in a new gaming rig. They're, they're, they're pretty impressive products. Obviously, if you go to PCPro.com, we have a whole host of benchmarks, more pictures and breakdowns of the cards, uh, as well as, you know, we'll go into power consumption and all that in a little bit more detail there. I'll have a link in the description below, and uh, hopefully you guys will go there and check it out. And make sure you subscribe to our channel here so you can uh, follow up when we have other Radeon R9 Fury cards to talk about as well. Thanks, guys.